the apex of power, which is the political standing committee, or just PSC for short. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there are six different versions of names. And among these six versions, there are ten names that are common to all. And these ten names include, obviously, uh, Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang, and then uh, Jiang Dejiang, who is Chongqing party boss, Wang Qizang, vice premier, Li Yuanqiao, the party's organization chief, Liu Yingzang, the party's propaganda chief, and Zhang Gaoli, Tianjin party boss. Apart from these five, there are still other uh, three, who are Yu Zhenxing, Shanghai's party boss, Wang Yang, Guangdong party boss, and Liu Yandong, who is the only lady politician that made her way to this top position. Of these ten names, it was said that former Premier Li Peng was strongly against um, including um, Yu Zhengxing and Wang Yang in the PSC. Why? Uh, according to Li Peng, Yu Zhengxing's brother had defected to the USA in the mid-1980s, and since then it has been a negative legacy for Yu Zhengxing. As for Wang Yang, we all know that Wang Yang and Bo Xilai are at loggerheads with each other over the administration of Chongqing. Now that the party has dealt Bo Xilai a severe blow, Li Peng thought that it might be advisable not to include Wang Yang in the PSC so as to pacify the very strong pro Bo fashion within the party. So how serious is the, uh, is the party versus Prince Ling rivalry in the battle for top positions? Will it matter policy-wise if one or the other gains dominance? Well, I think the competition between the two factions are extremely keen this time, which explains why until now we still don't have a finalized version yet. Now, to overcome the problem of having too many candidates vying for the top post, it is said that Xi Jinping had recently suggested using a differential voting system to eliminate the weaker ones and to, so as to break the impasse. He even suggested using a rate of 30%. Now, at this rate, uh, 10 candidates will return the required 7 PSC members. Now, by using differential voting system to determine the PSC, this is unprecedented. It shows two things. First, the competition between the two fashions, the Tuang Pai and the Princelings, is extremely keen this time. And also, two important retirees former President Jiang Zemin and former Li Peng, uh, Premier Li Peng, were still exerting their influence behind the scene. The second reason is that in the post dun era, there is no single authority able to command the respect of all fashions and to break a deadlock if no one wants to give way. This is another fact that is clearly uh, manifested in this PSC. Policy-wise, if the princeling get the upper hand, then I think Xi Jinping might be more at ease in implementing his ideas on political reform because we all know that Xi Jinping had lately been very proactive on political reform issues. If the Tuang Pai won, then I think there will be greater emphasis on improving people's livelihood. As far as external relations are concerned, I don't see any major difference between these two fashions.
So it's been said that the Hu Wen leadership was one of rule by Soviet trained engineers. But how would you describe the new leaders waiting in the, in, in, in the wings? Are there any common characteristics that define them? And if there are, how would that actually help or hinder them in you know, dealing with the challenges that China is likely to face in the next 10 years? The common characteristics of the next generation leadership is that they all belong to the so-called Lao San Jie, which means graduates from high schools in the three most lunatic years of the Cultural Revolution in 1966, 67, and 68. For them, their common generic characteristics are they could not get further up in their education because of the Cultural Revolution. They participated in the Red Guard movement, doing all sorts of crazy and destructive things like in beating up their own parents and teachers. They were later sent by Mao Zedong in the movement up the mountains and down the villages, and therefore got a real taste of how poor and backward China was. And in the process, they toughened themselves with all sorts of streetwise skills. As a generation, they were lost because most of their prime time in their formative years were wasted in the chaos. However, many of them managed to do their self-study so that when university entrance examination resumed in 1977, for the first time after the Cultural Revolution, they got enrolled in the university. Both Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang are typical examples. Now, since the Lao San Jie people as a group know more about China because of their experience than all previous generations' leaders, there is a hope that they were in a better position to formulate more appropriate policies that are more reflective of the reality of the country. Mr. Cheng, with Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang looking certain to take the top two positions, can you shed some light on who might be the people who will be in the new leadership? Well, with three weeks to go before the Chinese Communist Party convened its 80 party congress, to announce a new generation of leadership. To this very late stage, we know only for sure that current Vice President Xi Jinping and Vice Premier Li Keqiang will make their way into the party's power apex, which is the Politburo Standing Committee, or PSC for short.